better than your currency. Splurge your millions, buying houses like Monopoly. Fucking nine to five, man, the money is a joke to me. Buying cryptocurrency, my money in the privacy. I make it rain dollars, the watch me disappear. I'm so fly, man, I'm a niece of man. Hey guys and girls, welcome to this week's episode of the No BS with Birchie podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Birch, and this is a show unraveling the truth to the facade of the 21st century. We're now X of the Matrix and waking up to motherfucking reality. And what a good time to talk about waking up to reality. You know, it's start of 2023, you know, first weekend, it's exciting. You've got, you know, some new goals. You're going to quit smoking until you hang out with your mate down the pub and pick up a ciggy, whatever it may be that you're trying to quit or change in your life. You know, I think it's important to be disciplined to that and, um, you know, focus on, you know, how is this year going to play out for me? And, you know, quite often, like, I'm sure every year we sit there and we say we're going to improve something we're going to make something but you might sit there and go oh it's just another year whatever right um but i think it's it's a good clean slate to be able to go okay we'll start of a year 2023 is going to be my good year uh, i'm going to do all this one two three this is what i want to make happen but what actions do you need to take you know where's the clarity around your goals you know you've set your goals whatever those goals may be i've, I've talked a lot about goal setting in previous webinars and previous episodes of the No BS Virtue podcast. I'm not going to go into the goal side of things so much, but uh, I'm thinking more about, you know, taking the action and uh, what things do you need to do to bring into your orbit for you to be successful in uh, in this year. And, you know, I, I guess I've talked a lot about in 2022, the year that's gone, um, you know, people that have started with no property they've got 10 properties you know there's people that had no property they've got five properties people that had one or two properties and now 10 15 properties you know and i guess sometimes i talk about random things in the world and sometimes i talk about you know the core of you know property investing and investing and i think you know being a new year a lot of people will be sitting there thinking okay how can i make this year my best year and what sort of things can i do in order to reach that portfolio so firstly having a plan of attack and if you don't have a plan it's just like having a business without a business plan you know uh, businesses fail um you know i don't know all the stats i could sit here and give you all these stats which are amazing but um you know i think it's something like you know 50 percent of businesses fail in the first two years and then after five years only like 10 percent of them remain and after 10 years it's only like two percent or five percent or something that still exists and if you think about property and property investors there's so many property investors out there who want to be investors and um, the thing that i've realized uh, especially over the last 14 years of, of me doing this publicly and and with the businesses and the group of companies is you know there's a lot of people that are actually in the elite part of australians which have you know double digit property portfolios and i've probably you know worked with directly or indirectly at least half of those people that have double digits there's, there's only less than 20,000 people that have six or more properties how many people have 10 or 15 properties there's only i don't know i don't even have they don't even have stats at the at the uh, ato or the abs statistics about that so you know i'd have to take a, a stab in the dark and think i don't know maybe 5,000 people that have 10 plus properties and you know we've we've been fortunate enough to help a lot of those investors on their journey and and to get there that would mean if we've got 25 million people and there's only like 5,000 people that have 10 properties in their portfolio or more, um, that's a pretty elite sort of small amount of people that, that have that. And, um, you know, how do those guys get there? How does someone start in 2022 and at start of 2023 have, you know, from zero to 10 in their portfolio and, and break out of that, that, that life that they used to have and, and not have those assets in their portfolio. So um, uh, having a strategy is very important, just like a business plan. Yeah, I can sit here all day and talk about that, but probably the best place to start is to reach out to my team and you know get on a discovery session and see how we can formulate a plan with you. Um, but looking at you know what are the requirements to get into the journey? You might be sitting here going, well, I, I, I don't have any money yet, right? I might have to wait until 2024. Well, I actually spoke to a guy the other day which um he's one of my investors he started i remember i think he was like he had like 20 grand and we really you know some people 
I don't suggest going 95% LVR, 90% LVR, or anything like that. I always like 20%. But this guy, I think he started with like a 10% deposit. He had like 20 grand. We bought him a shitty property in Newcastle. Uh, he still owns it. It's gone up from 200 grand to six, 700 grand. It's probably about 700 grand now. It's got about 500 grand in equity in it. Um, and this guy built a portfolio. And like now, we're talking the other day, I'm like, we'll just buy 10 more properties. It's like 10. He goes, yeah, okay. And, um, you know, uh, people don't realize what they have at, at their fingertips. Um, you know, what is your position look like? Where could you find your deposit? Where could you find your uh, 10 deposits for to be able to buy the 10 properties? How is that going to, you know, work for you? So first is identifying what the, the, the game plan is. Once we've got the game plan, then we can go, okay, you know, let's, let's start taking action. Where's the deposit at? You know, where's my finance at? Have you spoken to your broker? Uh, if you're not happy with it, what your broker's saying, go and ask five more brokers. Hey, how are you going to get me there? If you've got a broker that can get you there, well, then that's fine. You use that to get to the level. And when they can't help you, then go find a new broker that can help you get to the next leg, leg of your journey. And I guess as a business over the years, um, some people have been great. And they don't save the whole journey. This last year in 2022 um, that's gone, we have had a few staff that have passed their 10 years with the business, which is really cool because it shows we're doing something right from a staff retention point of view and, and all that. Looking at the journey over the last 14 years of, of the Be Investor Group of companies, you know, we've been blessed with lots of good people. Some people are here, some people aren't. You know, 10 years is a long time in a job um, and you've got to do things that you enjoy. And um, we've had people that have been great that are no longer here. Uh, we've had people that are left we didn't want to have leave. And then we've had new people come on board and they've taken things to new directions. And looking at your property portfolio and looking at your journey, you need to make sure that your team are up to speed with your goals. But if they can't be up to speed with your goals because you haven't given them clarity on that, well, then it's hard for them to help you get to your goals. So, you know, having clarity is very important, but having the right people around you on your team to be able to perform and be able to get you to that next level. If they, they can't push through that next barrier, because this is all about... Have you ever noticed when you're playing a computer game, right? Like whether it be Sega Rally or Daytona USA or whatever. I'm probably showing my age now. I just remember games when I was a kid, Sonic the Hedgehog, whatever, right? any Super Nintendo game, whatever, you, you 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 get to a point where you get a checkpoint and you go up to a new level, right? And on that level that you go to rise up to, there's there's always a hurdle that you have to come over. And I say that it's uh, every new level faces a new devil and people can't get through that gatekeeper because they just can't make it over that, that hurdle. They just feel like, okay, that I, can't, I don't have what it takes to push through that. I don't have what it takes to push over to the next level. But if you look at it like that, it's like, okay, well, who is the new version of me that I need to show up to? and be able to overcome that level of the game and get to the next journey. And, um, you know, I think as a business owner, I've had to change, I've had to grow, I've had to move left and right and make things happen. Um, as an investor, I've had to look at that as well and think, okay, how can I, you know, bring new experts in? How can I get the people that can actually come together and take things to the next level? And, you know, I, I guess if you're stuck, whether it's at the, the, the ground zero, first step, you know, that's an issue. But if you're stuck at 0.5 or 0.10 of buying your properties, well, then you need to work out, okay, there's got to be a better way. And that's how, you know, I'm sure that, let's say there's 5,000 people that have, you know, 10 or more properties in their portfolio. I don't think any of them have just been sat there and go like, oh yeah, I woke up and I had 10 properties, right? There's always been a hurdle. There's always been some sort of issue that's come their way that they've had to overcome or created adversity to, to be able to push through to get to the next level. And um, yeah, it never stops, right? Like you see people out there, do you think that, I don't idolize these people, I don't re you know, respect them, I don't know them, right? But you look at, I don't know, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, all those like, you know, was put on TV, the little puppets up there. Um, all those people, they've they've been successful, they're billionaires and all that sort of stuff. But do you think they got there without massive levels of um, massive levels of adversity? Do you not think they got there just, oh, it's so easy, I just woke up, I came to the office and this has all happened. They've been dealing with shit to push forward and push forward to be successful. You look at any sport, sports athlete, they're not at the top of their game without facing you know challenges and it's 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 having clarity of okay this is what i need to do if i'm a, a golfer if i'm what's that guy tiger woods if he's he i'm sure he's out there at three o'clock in the morning hitting balls uh working out on his swing of his his game or i don't know michael jordan shooting the hoops and you know I, I would, i'd be lucky to throw the bloody ball right i'd be lucky to catch the ball but these guys 
they're running around and doing the best thing that they can and that all comes from refining their skill and and becoming as sharp as they can at their game and if you want to be an investor in 2023 that's going to be at the top of your game you need to be you know knowledgeable you need to have the skill sets you need to be um, adapt and, and, and skilled with all the right resources that are around you to be able to get you there. So, you know, do think of it very methodologic, methodological and um, do think about, you know, each step. How is each step going to work? And workshop that. Get a clean book of paper and just start doodling ideas, start drawing numbers, start looking at, you know, start from the back and go, okay, this is what I want. And then just start flipping pages going, okay, this is what I need to do to get there. This is what I need to do to get there. And just break down those numbers and you'll formulate, um, you know, basic sort of strategies to be able to to make that happen. But um, I guess, you know, if you're wanting to get the right team of people around you, you need to start asking the right sort of questions as well. People just go, oh, I've got a good broker. It's like, oh, why is the broker good? Oh, I've just dealt with them for many years or it's my parent's friend or it's a uncle or an auntie or something like that. It's like, okay, how many portfolios do they have which have helped people get to 10 or more properties, right? If you want to be a 10 or more property person, it's like saying, fucking, uh, what is it? Like, you got a sports team and the coach has lost every single team. There's, how are you going to be the winning team if you've got a bad coach, right? If you don't have the right resources, you've got a good coach, but then you've got bad nutrition. Everyone's eating Maccas on the team and smoking and drinking. Um, you know, that's not going to be the right recipe to be successful at the top of your game. You need to make sure that you're doing the right steps in order to get there and you're living the life of the person that needs to be able to get there. So make no mistake, if you need to do that, you need to make sure and sure as shit that every single person on your team um, has the capacity to get you there, right? People are good people. If you ever sit there and go, oh, but they're a good guy or that's a good girl, I've had to pull myself up for the biggest mistakes on hiring people in business or having people in my professional network. When someone tells me what someone's done wrong, I've always gone back and been like, oh yeah, but they're a good person. And it's like, if I have to justify that they're a good person, they're good people, right? But they're not the best person to fulfill that job. You need to make sure that when you're interviewing, whether it be your accountant, your lawyer, uh, your uh, broker, your buyer's agent, your property manager, any of the people that are important on your team, your financial planner, you want to know what is their mindset? What is their belief system? What is their ability and expertise in helping other people get you to where that you want to be? If they've never helped anyone else get there, how are they going to have the skill set in order to be able to help you get to where you want to be? So, you know, I, I think we talk about buying properties, one, two, three, pull out equity, you know, another one, two, three, pull out equity and all that sort of stuff. But I think, you know, breaking it down in a little in-depth sort of position and going, okay, who are the people that are required? Who are the people that are going to get me there? You know, what's the expertise? I was saying about those few staff that have got the 10 year anniversary in last year in, in 2022. Someone brought it up and said, well, just between two of them, there's 20 years of expertise, right? And that's when you think about it, it's like those people have come to the business. Of the, the funny thing is, the people that have been with me for like 10 years or, or so, um, they have large property portfolios. They've got double digit portfolios as well, right? And they have learned along the way, they've grown, they've you know got themselves in a really good positions. So when you're dealing with with people out there, there's a wash of property gurus, especially in the last two years, right? You'd have to be, you know, mentally incapacitated not to be able to be successful in any sort of financial capacity in the property space. But the people that are out there, there's suddenly all these experts that are out there giving advice, but they don't know the bigger picture. They wouldn't be able to get to 10, 15, 20 properties in the portfolio. They don't have the the the, the knowledge or the, the expertise in helping other people get there. So very important to ensure that is the case. Make sure that your accountant, for example, people go to their accountant and say, oh, I've been using the accountant for 20 years. You know, they get my income down. I earn 200 grand a year. I pay tax on 40 grand. I save 100 grand a year on tax, whatever. Those people, that's good. They can help you save tax, but any accountant can help you save tax, right? A good accountant will understand what you need to get to the bank. A good accountant will understand, okay, 
if we structure your tax this way, minimise the tax, but then also be able to open up the, the finance gates for you to happen. Nine times out of 10, I see people and their accountants have hurt them from being able to go on and purchase by getting the loans because of how they've structured their financial affairs. So it all gels together. If your properties are under-rented, uh, in 2022, um, I noticed when we are managed, managing the properties with Blink, when I buy the properties, on average about $70 per week, l- less is what, we're, what they're renting for. So when we buy the property, we're pushing them up by about $70 per week because the old agent has under-rented the property. So if you had 10 properties and you're in the elite club of 10 properties, um, 70 bucks a week, that's 700 bucks a week if you were not getting a manager right. 700 bucks a week, 36 grand a year or whatever, 36,400 per year. That would severely impact your servicing level because you don't have enough income coming through to be able to support you know for more loans and whatnot so everyone has to be on the same time on the same page um and i guess you know the other aspect is you know whether you're building your foundation portfolio uh whether you're building you know the the retirement portfolio there's different sort of stages that you go through from building your portfolio your foundation portfolio would be you know maybe 10 15 12 8 whatever it is properties nothing sexy nothing flash people come in they go i'm going to buy a house i want to subdivide it and all that it's like you're going to be stuck with this one property i can tell straight away they're going to be stuck with one property for you know five years or two years or whatever and it slows them down and ties the legs together from being able to achieve their bigger goal so having the right strategy at the right time with the right properties do i say subdividing property is bad if that's what you want to do go do it but there's no point subdividing properties if you only have one because then you're really just becoming a property trader you're taking on all this risk and you're just going to make a few bucks from buying it subdividing it selling it make 50k whatever but that money could be better being retained and having your net worth position continuously grow up so looking at you know, wherever you're at, whether you're starting today with no property, whether you've got one place and it's your house that you live in and you're trying to pull out equity, whether you're, you know, trying to buy your first house and you go, shit, I can't afford a million bucks. It's really ugly, right? Like interest rates are going up and, you know, it's going to be more unaffordable, etc. And you've got to pay that mortgage. I always look at how can someone else pay for my lifestyle, right? And people talk about rent vesting and all that sort of stuff. If you're going to buy one place for a million bucks to live in, you're going to have to be on the hook if it's 6%, 7% interest, that's 60, 70 grand a year. That's like 12 to 1400 bucks a week of interest that you're going to be have to pay plus holding costs for that property, right? It's a lot of money. But for that same million dollars, you could go and buy, you know, five properties at 200 grand a piece um still have the same amount of debt still having to pay 70 grand a year and or 60 grand a year 12 1400 bucks a week in interest but you'd have five sets of rental incomes if let's just say that they're 300 bucks a week you'd have 300 bucks a week times five that's 1500 dollars per week your mortgage would be covered by that plus a little bit extra money to cover for the other expenses you know looking at um you know building up that that that, that portfolio are you going to be paying for the mortgage for that million dollars worth of debt or are you going to outsource that to someone else? And, you know, they can come in the format of rent vesting. Is it better to rent and instead of buying the house? Like they're all different sorts of equations that you need to be looking at. You could have a house that's gone up 200 grand. You might have no money, but you could use the 200 grand in equity to go and buy yourself your first four properties in the first half of 2023. And then in the second half, you could pull equity out of those four properties and buy the next two or three properties. There's things that you could be doing at each step along your journey to be able to push yourself forward to the next level, whether that be increasing your cash flow from rents, whether it be, most people think, and the thing I've noticed over the last 14 years is most people think they have to go work harder or you know uh, earn more money to be able to go and invest more. The people I see that are the most successful that are in that you know group of you know 5,000 or so people with, and it might only be like 2,000 people that have you know 10 or more properties in their portfolio. I think it's probably more towards that, but I don't have specific stats because all the stats stop out at six properties. And there's only 20,000 20, people with six or more properties. So. Um, most of those people are just everyday people that are renting property. Uh, they may not even own their own house, right? Um, 
so and they're not on massive income but it's because they've had a strategy they've had the right team they've had the right people they've had the right coaches they've had the right mentors they've had the right support to be able to help them reach their goals so it's hard to find people that are going to help you reach your goals if you don't even know what your goals are uh, it's hard for you to be able to find and identify the right you know experts on your team so um i i guess as a, a final note you know 2023 is going to be a year of um, you know interesting. Uh, when I say it's going to be an interesting year, right? You're telling me that 2022 was interesting. You're telling me that 2021 was an interesting. You're telling me that 2020 was an interesting. No, 2019. You know, these years have all been faced with their challenges, and a lot of people out there are scared of interest rates at the moment. I hear it, um, but what you've got to realise is that there's going to be a whole world of pain for a lot of people. There has been pain for the last three or four years, even though things have been going great interest rates going up is going to affect a few people um how many people have a mortgage i think about 50 percent of australians have a mortgage and out of those 50 percent that do have a mortgage <coughs> or homeowners have a mortgage um, out of those people that have a mortgage only a few people only maybe 10 percent of the people that have a mortgage have got a mortgage over the last two or three years which are very high mortgages the rest of them might have well, i've got properties that are worth million dollar here million dollar there but the loan's only worth a hundred thousand dollars so who cares if i'm paying you know on a hundred grand loan four percent or i'm paying seven percent it might be an extra few grand but my rent's gone up you know so so greatly over the last year it doesn't really impact my bottom line so some people will be impacted in 2023 but ultimately you know rents are rising they've risen a lot in 2022 um, there's nothing showing that it's going to slow down if not it's going to put more pent up a demand to push rents up which would mean that you know tenants will be feeling at a pinch a lot harder um, homeowners were getting extra cash flow coming through their portfolios and you know my view is is that interest rates are at a top and uh, the bond market's going to implode i don't want to go into any technical stuff in this video i'm going to keep it very property related but as they are forced to bring interest rates back down, whether it be in the second half of 2023 or whenever it may be, I don't want to, you know, go into that specifics here, but I do think it'll be in much sooner than what a lot of people feel. What would happen to your position with interest rates at that point? Your, your cash flow is just going to explode, and then we're going to see further levels of inflation. People can go. On. There's so many people sitting on the sidelines, like tens of thousands of people that I know. Um, that are sitting on the sidelines ready to pounce upon property, but they just can't get the loans at the moment because interest rates have gone up, the banks are servicing criteria are much tighter. So what's going to happen when interest rates come down and people can service greater for loans? They're going to go out, they're going to get more money printed, they're going to go buy more assets. People can see that currency is losing its value and assets are rising in value. So um, I guess that is a part of the opportunity is taking advantage of the inflation. You can sit there and whinge and say everything's gone up. But you know we're, we're blessed with an opportunity of high levels of inflation, which I believe will go to hyperinflation. Once again, another discussion for another day. And that inflation is what's going to make you know so many people so wealthy over the next coming years. So if you need help um, on whether it be starting out or building a new team, or if you've got the shits with your team and go, look, I don't like my broker, don't like my buyer's agent, I need some help with strategy, mentorship, or whatever the case may be, reach out to my team. We're 14 years in business. We're probably the, light, the, the longest serving uh, buyer's agency out there. Um, lots of results with thousands of people that have got you know large portfolios. Uh, reach out to my team, one 367 925 Hit us up at admin at beinvested.com.au. And you can watch us and subscribe to us at Spotify, Google Play, Apple Play, and uh, watch us every week on YouTube. We'll catch up soon. Have a great week. Bye for now. Like Bilal said, man, we're stuck in the matrix. This my advice, don't care if you take it. The dollar back to die soon to be hyperinflated. This my two cents, don't care if you save it. Join be decentralized and you will see. You've been lied to the whole time and it's the irony. Cause they do the exact opposite. You become a slave to the system. And up your money, all they do is profit. There's no conspiracy theory. You better hear me. Crypto will set you free before the system does. I don't care if you do or you don't. But what I'm saying is the truth to the reason you choke. I've never been a failure. Excuse my behavior. Keep talking. Haters doing me a favor. And you're telling lies. I know what they've been telling you. I'm the opposite of Donald Trump of Australia. It's amazing. Live for the taking. My time is never wasted. Just can't waste it. Take it.